Amanda bought a trolley luggage bag that was offered at 20% discount of its original price of $3. A sales tax of 3% was applied to the discounted price, so Amanda paid a total of F dollars to the cashier. Which of the following represents T in terms of P and F? So we have T, P and F, a bunch of variables. For some of you, it might get a little tricky to solve this algebraically with so many variables in the problem. Let's use a different approach. Let's plug in numbers for these variables and check out the options. And as this is a percentage problem, you want to start out with 100 as the original number, the initial price, so that it's easy to calculate at least the first percentage. So we are going to say, let the original price be equal to $100. So let's say P is equal to 100. So we start with 100. A 20% discount was offered so that the discount was $20, so the new price was $80. A sales tax of T% was applied, let's say T is equal to 10. So a sales tax of 10% was applied on $80. 10% of 80 is 8, so the new price is $88. And Amanda paid a total of F dollars, so 88 is F. She must have paid $88 if she started with $100 as the original price and the sales tax being 10%. So now that we have P as 100, F as 88 and T as 10, all we are going to do is plug in these numbers into the options and check out which one of these is going to give us a 10% for T. Remember, each one of these expressions are supposed to be equal to T. Which of the following represents T in terms of P and F? So this is like t is equal to, this is like t is equal to, and the same goes with all the other options. So we are going to plug in these numbers and check out which one is going to give us 10 for t. Option A, f which is 88 minus 0.2p, p being 100, this is 20. So we have 88 minus 20, that's 68 over 20 times 100. 68 over 20 times 100 is not going to give us 10 and therefore this isn't going to work. What about option B? 88 minus 0 0.8 times 100 that's 80 over 80 times 100 that's 8 over 80 times 100 and that is going to give us 10. So option B might be the right one. Let's check out the others. P minus 0.2F over 0.2F, P is 100, minus 0.2 times 88 is 17.6. Over 17.6 times 100 is not going to give us 10. P minus 0.8F over 0.8F, that's 100, minus 0.8 times 88 is 70.4. Over 70.4 times 100 is not going to give you 10 and finally 100 plus 17.6 over 17.6 times 100 is not going to give you 10 either. So the right answer has to be option B. That gives us 10% for T when we plug in these values for P and F. So this is a question where part of the difficulty lies in interpreting what the question is asking you for. So what we have here is a quadratic equation, x squared minus 7x plus 12 equals 0. And the question wants us to find a and b, which are the two solutions of that quadratic equation. So in the other words, we're looking for the two values such that this whole thing here equals 0. And the way we find that using quadratic equations is by factoring. So let's make our parentheses here. We have a single x squared here, so we're just going to put the x's in first. Now we have to find the other numbers. So we have a negative 7x and a positive 12. So we're looking for two numbers in which the product is a positive 12 and which sum to negative 7. Now since we have a negative here and a positive here, we know that the two numbers we're looking for must both be negative. So to find these numbers, what I'm first going to do is write down all the factors that can give us 12. So there's 1, 12, 2, and 6, 3, and 4. So the only numbers that are going to sum to 7, or negative 7, I should say, are negative 3 and negative 4. 
So I'm just going to plug those in there right now. And as we can see, rewriting the equation, we have x equals 3 and 4. So the last thing we need to do is plug these values into here. So it doesn't matter which way you plug them in. So we get 3 minus 2 over 3 times 4 minus 2 over 4, which gets us 1 third times 2 fourths. So the answer is 2 twelfths, or 1 sixth. Now, if this was the actual test day, since this is a numeric entry question involving a fraction, it is completely okay to leave your answer as 2 twelfths. You will still receive full credit for it. And in fact, it's probably preferable not to simplify your fractions at the end if you have that as the answer. It's just going to waste a few seconds which you can spend on more problems. So if you have a fraction that you're not sure can be reduced more in a numeric entry question for the answer, just leave it as is. Our goal is to solve this equation for k. So let's begin by getting our k terms on the same side of the equal sign. We'll add dk to both sides. And now let's add b to both sides of our equation. At this point, we can factor out our k on the left-hand side. Finally, we'll divide both sides by a plus d. And we see that our answer is e. This is a problem that lends itself well either to an algebraic solution or to a picking numbers solution. We show picking numbers in the text explanation, so here I'm going to show an algebraic solution. So to add two fractions, I'll just step back here and say, remember that math is a system of perfect justice and perfect equality. What we do with numbers is exactly the same as what we do with variables. We treat variables and numbers in the same way. And so when we have numbers, of course, we find a common denominator. So here we're going to find a common denominator. And what we're going to do is we're going to take that first fraction and multiply it by 1 minus x over 1 minus x. In the second fraction, we're going to take that fraction and multiply it by 1 plus x over 1 plus x. And so that, that way, what we'll get is the common denominator of 1 plus x times 1 minus x. Now, what do we have in the numerator? Let's distribute. We get a y. We get a minus xy. We get a plus y. And we get a plus xy. And so the numerator, we get y plus y, which is 2y, and these two terms cancel. So we just get 2y in the numerator. In the denominator, we have the difference of two squares pattern. The difference of two squares pattern, p plus q times p minus q equals p squared minus q squared, one of the most useful patterns in all of algebra. That's a very important one to know. And so here, 1 plus x times 1 minus x is 1 minus x squared. And so this is what it equals, and this is equal to answer choice C. All right, we want to know what happens when we divide this expression by 10. My first step is going to be to take this 9 here and rewrite it as 4 plus 5. Now, why would I do this? Well, doing this allows me to focus on this portion of my expression. I know that x squared plus 4x plus 4 is equal to x plus 2 times x plus 2. And we already know a lot about x plus 2. We know that this x plus 2 is divisible by 10, and this x plus 2 is divisible by 10. So if both pieces here are divisible by 10, then their product must also be divisible by 10. What this means is, if we take this yellow portion of our expression and divide it by 10, the remainder will be 0. So if we add 5 to this portion, then our new remainder will be 5 when we divide this by 10. So as you can see here, our answer must be C. After you have read this problem and planning to solve this problem algebraically using a standard method, I want you to pause for a moment and listen to me. The GRE will reward you if you can recognize patterns rather than just follow a standard approach. Often the standard approach will take you longer. So you want to spend a little time trying to figure out a pattern, if there is any. 
before diving into the standard solution. And the reason why I'm saying all this is because there's a pattern in this problem. You know what? You look at the 6, you look at this 3, and you know that 2 times 3 is 6. And therefore, we can say that 6 over 11 is equal to 2 times 3 over 11. Or in other words, 3 over 11 is equal to 1 half of 6 over 11. We need to find out what is 3 over 11 of k. So 3 over 11 of k is going to be 1 half of 6 over 11 of k. And it's given that 6 over 11 of k is 8 over 41. Therefore, we know this portion is equal to 8 over 41. And therefore, 3 over 11 of k is going to be equal to 1 half of means times 8 over 41. We can simplify the 2 and the 8, write a 4 over here. So this is 1 times 4 over 41, which is 4 over 41.